Hello everyone and welcome! Today a lot of gaps in the lore will be filled and a lot of mysteries will be revealed, because today we will talk about Aurelian Sol. Whenever a comet appears, it is said that new empires rise, old civilizations fall and even that the stars themselves may tumble from the sky. These theories are not that far away from the truth. What they don't know is that the comet actually hides a powerful being. Aurelian Sol was already ancient by the time the first planets were being formed. He was born with the first breath of creation. At the time the space was nothing but a black emptiness. And because there wasn't really much to do, Aurelian started spreading twinkling lights around to fill out the darkness. A celestial dragon is an exotic creature. And so Aurelian very rarely met an equal being. But as more forms of life emerged to fill the universe, he noticed that small creatures started living on the planets orbiting his stars. Soon they looked up and wondered what is the purpose of his stars. Aurelian was flattered. This was the first time he had an audience that was interested in his work. He wanted a deeper connection with one of the races he deemed worthy. And so he decided to reveal himself. Of course, the powerful and ambitious species he had chosen were the Targonians. A storm of stars started twisting and warping in the night sky. Soon it was obvious that the stars themselves were part of the body of a celestial dragon. Amazed by his illuminant powers, the Targonians named the dragon Aurelian Sol. As a token of respect, they gave Aurelian a crown of star gems, which he proudly decided to wear in their honor. In time, Aurelian became bored and wandered back into the empty space. However, the further he traveled from Targon, the more he felt as if something was moving him and directing him elsewhere. He could hear voices shouting and commanding across galaxies. It seemed as if the gift he received was no gift at all. Outraged, he tried to break the bond by force only to discover that for each attack against his new masters, one of his stars vanished forever. This powerful magic turned Aurelian into a Targonian weapon. He was forced to win their wars, battle against ancient beasts and even fight other cosmic entities that he had known since the dawn of time. For millennia, he helped the Targonians to forge a powerful empire. Not only was all of this just a waste of his powers, but because of the lack of maintenance, his past glories slowly vanished from the celestial realm. Aurelian vowed to never again ignite a fresh star. Then he felt it, a weakening in the bond. The voices from his crown started clashing and arguing. Some of the voices went silent entirely. An unknown catastrophe he could not fathom had thrown off the balance of those who bound him. They were scattered and distracted. Hope crept into Aurelian's heart. Driven by the thought of freedom, Aurelian arrived back on the world where it all began. Rune Terra. As always, he traveled in the form of a comet illuminating the world beneath him. He arrived at the deserts of Shurima. He felt familiar magic in the air as he flew over a massive half-constructed sun disk. The cruel masters thought that by constructing the sun disk they were doing a holy work. Seeing a comet in the sky only boosted their egos. Aurelian knew that the sun disk would be used to channel the powers of the sun into their chosen ones, turning them into demigods. He also knew that trying to control powers beyond the mortal's grasp usually backfires. And so he led them to seal their own fate. 
Aurelian continued his flight. The deserts faded into brown hills lightly covered with grass. He noticed bodies of both the dead and the dying scattered around. These lands were in war, and one side was losing badly. He saw stag skulls resting on pikes next to few warriors still on their feet. They were surrounded by soldiers riding great shaggy beasts. The surrounded warriors saw the comet and power started surging through their veins once more. The wounded rose up and picked up their axes and bows in a final stand. Aurelian didn't bother to hang around to see the outcome. As always, the survivors will scratch the comet onto their cave walls and in a thousand years they will use it on their banners while marching into similar battles. He wondered why they never learn, even after capturing the long history of their species. As Aurelian flies forward, he sees all the inhabitants of this world looking up, all doing the same things, pointing, kneeling, sacrificing virgins upon stony altars. They all look up and see a comet and never ask what lies beneath the blazing light. Instead, they stamp it everywhere as their own symbol of good omen. What caught Aurelian's attention was that some more advanced inhabitants wrote down his coordinates for scientific reasons instead of using him as a prophecy. As he got closer to his destination, the sky cleared. The sun above him was one of his first creations. It reminded him the feeling of a fresh star being forged between his fingers. But it also reminded him the betrayal of this world. Finally, he arrived at the place it all began, Mount Targon. The aspects drew him here to seal another breach. Then he saw her, a warrior standing alone at the mountain's peak, fully armored in golden plates long hair covering her back with a spear in her hand. She called herself Pantheon, the fury of Targon incarnate. She grabbed onto an invisible chain and dragged Aurelian closer. She started yelling at Aurelian, her voice booming inside his head, transmitted through the star gem crown. Dragon, she said confidently, seal their gate. She said as she pointed her spear in the direction of a violet rift. Aurelian could smell the purple poison from another world even before he arrived. So instead, he fixed his eyes on Pantheon. She expected Aurelian to fall in line like a dog on a leash. But that day was different. Dragon, Aurelian answered. Are you sure commanding me with such a low name is wise? Pantheon took a step back, as if that tiny distance could protect her. Seal their gate, she said again, louder than before, her voice slightly quivering. She pointed her spear toward Aurelian, as if that tiny weapon could do any harm. This was the first time Aurelian had ever seen an aspect of Targon shaken. She was not used to having to tell him twice. I will deal with those chittering horrors in due time, dear Pantheon. Do as you are commanded, dragon, Pantheon shouted, or this world is lost. This world was lost the moment Targon surrendered itself to arrogance. Pantheon stood still, confused as she struggled to grab hold of the celestial reins. Only now did she realize what was going on. Targon was distracted and Aurelian was slipping away from his bonds. Pantheon shouted again, but this time Aurelian couldn't resist. His will was once again not his own. He turned his attention toward the breach. He saw the Voidborn creeping into their world. The rift was pulsing with unseen energy, corrupting the very essence of this reality. The creatures of the Void were drawn to him. They seeked to devour Aurelian 
the greatest of their threats. From the reaches of his mind, Aurelian conjured an image of solar furnace which once ignited the hearts of stars. He released beams of pure sunfire, incinerating wave after wave of those unending monsters, driving them back into their own realm. Then he felt a connection in the air. Something was on the other side of the rift. Something hungry, indomitable and with its own will. Unlike all the mindless Voidborn abominations. Whatever it was, it was laughing. Pantheon shouted another command, but Aurelian ignored her. He has seen similar anomalies scattered across the universe, but this one was different. Only few beings could create something so complex, let alone tear apart the fabric of existence. He shuddered at the thought of what kind of entity was able to do something like this. He didn't need Pantheon's orders to know what to do. Aurelian enjoyed the next step. Partly because he knew that they will remember it. Partly because it felt good to let some of his old power loose. But mostly because he wished to remind whatever was controlling the void that nobody laughs at him in his plane of existence. The base elements in the atmosphere rallied to Aurelian's will. At his command, it detonated and created a dwarf replica of one of his stars. It was quickly joined by two more similar stars. The night sky was now lit up by three lights spinning around Aurelian. As the stars spun around, they absorbed more matter and shined even brighter. Soon, Trees splintered, rivers evaporated, and mountains' walls crumbled into smoking avalanches. The tireless laborers erecting the sun disk, the soldiers taking the hills, the stargazers, the worshippers, the terrified, the doomsday's prophets, the hopeless, the rising kings, all those who beheld the streaking comet with selfish eyes witnessed the supernova as an early dawn. What fictions will they conjure to explain this phenomenon? Aurelian thought. When I am done here, nothing remains. Not even this incarnation of Pantheon. Then he has released the carnage he has created. After the job was done, all that was left were mountains melting into molten rivers flowing down the valley. This was the scar he had left upon this world. But for what he has done, he was about to pay. The crown surged a damning pain through Aurelian's body. He looked up and witnessed the last breath of a dying star. Some mortals wondered why would this pain Aurelian so much. But what they didn't realize was that the stars themselves were part of Aurelian's essence. Aurelian's heart cried in despair as the star shone brightly for the last time. Within seconds, Targon gained control over Aurelian again. But he had learned from their mistakes. A bit of him was free now. And in time, he will return to this world and he will cut off the rest of his bond. He tuned into the essence of war and listened. It wasn't happy about losing its mortal avatar on this world. But a new host had already been chosen. A warrior from the Rakor. Aurelian sensed that the rest of the Pantheon skin scattered across the cosmos. In that moment, all of their attention was focused on this world, where one of their aspects was vaporized by their own weapon. Aurelian launched himself up, away from the gravity of Runeterra. He sensed an emotion he had never felt from Targon before. Fear. And that is where Aurelian's story arguably ends. If you ask me, this was one of the best stories yet. It revealed a lot of information about this world and touched on some interesting topics. But if you have a question about what happened here, 
Don't worry, because I am about to make a second video explaining everything connected to Aurelian. If you liked this video, feel free to rate it. If you want, you can leave your feedback down in the comment section. And don't forget to come back soon, as there is a lot more lore to talk about. Thank you all so much for being here and watching this video. As always, thank you come again. So yeah, some of you may be still waiting for the Q&A video and don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it. I am still collecting the questions, but at the same time I have a lot of other videos that I want to do. So yeah, I will make it eventually, I just don't know when, so it's gonna be a surprise for everybody, including me. The next video that I will probably release will be probably the second Aurelian's video. And after that I'll wait for Tariq. Or maybe Jin. Jin got released too. So we'll see. So see you then.